Your woman's not going to like a lot of the things you say and do to keep her in line, but trust me when I tell you, she respects him. The bad boys, they weren't afraid to piss Amy off. She couldn't control them with sex, and she was unable to manipulate them. She couldn't control these guys, and that's why she stuck around. But what she doesn't know is that she'll never have the upper hand with high-value men. She has no idea that any man she feels like she can control and have the upper hand with is a man she will never be able to respect, and she'll be right back to square one when she cheats on them with Dave, the unemployed garage band guitar player who may or may not have an outstanding warrant because he owes back child support to five different women. Ah, yes, Amy Horton is at it again, gentlemen. She wrote another post that shows us how insufferable she is entitled, I say I want a good man, but the idea of dating a mature guy scares me. Now, this post grabbed my attention because the title alone verifies exactly what I've been saying about banana gobblers who run up on guys who treat them well. And that is, the better you treat a banana gobbler, the worse she'll treat you. Why is this, Donovan? This confuses me. Why don't women reciprocate good treatment? Why do they adore men who treat them poorly, but then turn around and ruin the lives of men who treat them well? Well, the answer is simple. Despite what they say out loud or on social media, girls who sleep around know they're not worthy of being treated like a lady. They are keenly aware that outside of the pleasure they provide men between the sheets, they are completely useless to high caliber men. For this reason, they tend to gravitate toward the men who treat them like garbage, cheat on them, and disrespect them. They know they deserve this behavior, which is exactly why they just can't get enough of these guys. My guys are always asking me, why do women chase these D-bags and A-holes all the time? Why are these girls so loyal to guys who treat them so badly? When a man treats an unworthy woman with kindness, respect, and courtesy, she gets upset because she thinks subconsciously, how does this guy not know I'm not worthy of his treatment? I have purple hair, a bull ring in my nose, a giant tattoo on my thigh, three kids by two different men, which is actually two and a half because I'm not 100% sure that Daniel is Daniel Jr.'s father, and I told him I still talk to my ex. Why in the world is this guy so clueless? When she asks herself these things, she will poke and prod the guy to make sure he's not just pretending to like her for the sole purpose of only hooking up and then ghosting on her. But when she figures out that he's another clueless guy who believes everything he hears about women, she'll lie, she'll cheat, and she'll disrespect him. Understand this, gentlemen. Promiscuous girls positively loathe men who do not recognize them for who and what they are and will punish these guys with the anger of a jilted lover. Another reason why banana gobblers treat good men terribly is because chaos, drama, turmoil, and dysfunction is all they know. These girls are like an ex-con who's been institutionalized by prison. When they get out, they don't know how to act. They can't handle freedom. They can't handle choice. All they know is three squares and a six by nine, being told when to take a piss and when to go to sleep. So they re-offend in order to go back to the environment they're the most comfortable in. Girls are exactly the same way, guys. All they know is getting treated like garbage, being verbally and sometimes physically abused, getting cheated on, and constant turbulence. So they re-offend, if you will, to get thrown back to the men who use and abuse them because despite the physical and mental wear and tear, it's what they're the most comfortable with. This is exactly where Amy Horton finds herself today. She's just been given parole, and because she's not sure of what awaits her on the outside, she's anxious. She has no idea how she'll respond to good treatment from men. And she's scared, guys. She said so herself in the title. She couldn't handle freedom in her 20s, which is exactly why she was sent to prison in the first place. So let's break this down. She says, quote, I talk a good game about how all I want out of my romantic life is a grown man with focused ambition and emotional maturity. When it comes down to it, though, I'm terrified to actually date someone like that because it brings up all my insecurities and fears. Here's why I have a hard time practicing what I preach. Number one, I'm not used to mature guys. I've dated very few men in my life, she says, and a whole lot of boys. It's been a long time since I've dated anyone for any length of time, so I'm out of practice. If a man who has his act together actually indicates that he wants me, I'll probably run away terrified. You see this, guys? Amy Horton is literally telling us that she is going to run away terrified when a man who has his act together indicates that he wants her. This is your answer, guys. This is the answer for the guys who ask, why did she all of a sudden just ghost on me? I'm in great shape, I'm driven, I have goals, I know how to handle women, and I don't tolerate the shenanigans of any of my women. I listened to Donovan's seven-hour course, How to Build a Quality Woman from the Ground Up, what you got at donovansharp.com slash courses, and have done everything that course instructed me to do. And because I followed that advice, I have a rotation of women who all want to be with me. 
So if I'm this so-called high value guy, then why did the girl I start to like the most just up and leave? Amy just answered that question for you. She also gives herself away as a bona fide banana gobbler by telling us it's been a long time she's dated anyone for any length of time, and that she's out of practice. This means she's been sleeping around for so long she doesn't know how to conduct herself in a committed, monogamous relationship. When guys wonder why a girl who says she wants commitment but can't understand why you don't want her texting her ex, going to the club, or being on social media, it's because she's been passed around for so long her brain has been rewired to think that her promiscuous behaviors are normal and healthy. So here's lesson number one, guys. Never commit to a woman who tells you she hasn't been in a relationship in a while. Now the reasons are obvious, and I discussed this at length in Womanese 101. Reason number one, if she hasn't been in a relationship in a while, she has exponentially increased her body count during that time. The second reason is that her relationship mentality has atrophied, meaning it will be very difficult, if not impossible, to rid her of the behaviors that kept her on the bed hopping spree for so long. Gentlemen, do not waste your time with girls like this. Use them for bedroom fun, then throw them back to the next guy when you're tired of her. Number two, I don't like feeling out of control. She continues, as much as I detest dating immature dudes, there's obviously something there that appeals to me subconsciously. I think that I have a need to feel like I'm in charge of romantic situations. It dates back to my childhood issues, I guess. I want to keep the upper hand. This makes absolutely zero sense. But before I tell you why, let's take a minute here to translate some of the language Miss Horton is using here. Because she's using words and descriptions that are purposely misleading, which indirectly dilutes what's really happening here. She just said, immature dudes. And earlier she said, mature guy, which is obviously the opposite. She also used the word boys and men to describe immature dudes and mature guys. She wants us to believe that she means she's been dating younger guys who are immature and don't know any better, as opposed to older men who have themselves together. But the difference between the two isn't age or maturity level. Oh no, the difference is bad boys versus high caliber men. That's it. Like most women, Amy jumped into bed with the bad boys in her 20s and shunned the men who were good to her. Now she did give a few men the old college try, as she told us earlier when she said she's dated very few men. But because she was following Sheryl Sandberg's advice on how to date, she put these guys on ice so she could continue having fun with boys. So when Miss Horton says boys or immature guys or dudes, she's talking about the bad boys, the guys with tattoos who treated her like garbage and passed her around. When she says mature men, or just uses the word men, she's talking about the guy who she now realizes had their act together when she passed them up in her party years. So getting back to number two here, she says that even though she detests dating the bad boys, which is sleeping with bad boys because remember, she said she hadn't dated anyone for any length of time for a while, she admits that something draws her to these guys. But she says that being in control is what keeps her coming back, so she's either ignorant or she's lying. Girls hate being in control, guys. They think they want to because feminism tells them to be control freaks and they want all the accolades that come with being in charge and being a leader. But women aren't equipped for leadership nor can they handle being in control. Amy was never in control with the bad boys and neither was any other woman, which is one of the main reasons why girls can't get enough of these guys. No, they certainly don't like not being in control, but they are turned on by the men who are in control. Your woman's not going to like a lot of the things you say and do to keep her in line, but trust me when I tell you, she respects him. The bad boys, they weren't afraid to piss Amy off. She couldn't control them with sex and she was unable to manipulate them. She couldn't control these guys and that's why she stuck around. But what she doesn't know is that she'll never have the upper hand with high value men. She has no idea that any man she feels like she can control and have the upper hand with is a man she will never be able to respect, and she'll be right back to square one when she cheats on them with Dave the unemployed garage band guitar player who may or may not have an outstanding warrant because he owes back child support to five different women. I have, she says, an unhealthy familiarity with dating bad boys. She continues, it might not be a good thing, but it's what I know. I understand emotionally stunted and immature men, and something in me wants to take care of them. A friend of mine once told me that I have a savior complex, and she's not wrong. I know that it's not my responsibility to fix guys, but old habits die hard. This is a typical flaw in female nature, especially now because women sleep around as a matter of habit. What I'm talking about here is women being attracted to men they think they want to fix. Here's how it usually goes. They start sleeping with a bad boy. The bad boy cheats on her, calls her names, treats her like garbage, the whole nine. Now we all know the worse you treat banana gobblers, the better they treat you, which means that eventually she will fall in love with that bad boy as they always do. 
So now she's invested emotionally and starts entertaining thoughts of a long-term relationship with him. And because today's women want beta behavior from alpha males, they try to change or fix him so they can satisfy both sides of their dualistic dating strategy, also known as good genes, good dad. But what women don't understand is that if they're successful in taming the wild stallion, she will lose that visceral attraction to him because number one, he's not the same person as he was when he met her, and number two, she realizes she can control him, and women are not turned on by men they can control. This is a paradox that so many women find themselves in all the time, but because women are grossly unaware that they destroy anything and everything they have sole control over, they can't help but to nag. And if the man she's nagging is weak-willed, has a scarcity mindset, or isn't steadfast in his beliefs, he'll cave in and submit to her whims. Now, some of you guys are probably wondering, why do women do this, Donovan? Why do they never realize that they've always fallen out of love with the men they are successful in bending to their will? Well, the answer is simple, because they're women, and this is just what women do. You see, guys, when a woman tells you to change your wardrobe or shave your beard or cut your hair, she's testing your manhood without even realizing she's doing it. She has no idea that her operating system, which is running in her subconscious, is asking, does he wear retro gaming t-shirts because he likes them, or is he just trying to be unique? Did he grow a beard because he simply wanted to, or did he grow it to become more attractive to girls? Let's see if this guy really is who he appears to be. And that's when she starts nagging you about changing things that are seemingly inconsequential, but turn out to be the very reason she leaves you in the first place. So here's lesson number two. If you allow a woman to change you, she will lose attraction for you. If you let your woman change anything about you, you have failed this test. Never forget this. I'm not usually attracted to grown men. She continues, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I've always been into guys who are my own age or younger. For the most part, I don't feel any physical chemistry with older men. There are always exceptions to the rule, of course, and not all emotionally developed men are older than me, but this has been the general trend. Do you guys see what she's trying to do here? It's almost as though she's writing each section after she listens to my assessment of the previous sections, and let me explain why this is. Earlier we established that mature men and men really means stable men. Men who have their act together, men who are high caliber or have the potential to become high caliber. Basically the opposite of the bad boy she was fooling around with. But now she slightly changed the vernacular to make us think she's talking about the same kind of men in an attempt to throw us off about who she's really talking about. Before she used mature guys as a pseudonym for nice guy. But now she's calling them grown men to mislead us into thinking that mature guys and grown men are the same thing. Amy's trying to fool us into thinking she's talking about the same kind of men, but she's not. All she did here was tell us that she has more physical chemistry with men around her age. That's it. This has nothing to do with what she's talking about in this article. Miss Horton is attempting to tell us that one of the reasons she used to pass up good guys is because she didn't feel any physical chemistry with them. But the mature guy she's talking about are not the same as the grown men she just described. She's trying to avoid being called out for passing up nice guys to bang the bad boys by conflating mature guys with grown men. She's doing this so she can say, well, I didn't pass up on nice guys for the bad boys. There were just some men I didn't have physical chemistry with and that's why things didn't work out. I was totally looking for a long-term relationship when I was 23, but if I'm not physically attracted to them, it's not my fault. These grown men she's talking about here in number five are neither mature nor immature men she's talking about. They are a separate group of men she's trying to group in with the good guys so that she can claim she gobbled bananas for noble and just reasons. Nice try, Amy. I have a hard time being vulnerable, she says, she continues. I'm very honest, yes, but I'm emotionally closed off. There is a definite distinction between the two. There are certain places that I simply don't or can't go with most people. When I'm confronted with a man who is open with his feelings, it freaks me out. I love how women just can't help but tell on themselves even when they try not to. And I always tell you guys, be patient. She's going to tell you the truth, but if you pay attention and just wait, eventually she will reveal the whole truth. Amy just told us that there are certain places she simply doesn't go with most people, as if to infer that she chooses not to open up emotionally with the men she's romantically involved with. But right after she said, I simply don't, she puts in parenthesis, or can't. And that's where she reveals the truth about her emotional state when it comes to men. You see guys, the very first article I broke down from Amy Horton was entitled, I'm scared that I no longer have the ability to be emotionally available. And in that article, she waxed poetic about the fact that because she's hooked up with so many men, 
She's afraid that she's unable to bond with or emotionally open up to men she's in relationship with. But Donovan, she says she was scared. She didn't actually say she could no longer emotionally bond to men. Yes, yes she did. Two years before she wrote this article. And because we know Miss Horton was most certainly not closing her legs for two years, we also know that she was increasing her body count during that time, which is exactly why she gave us this glimpse of truth in parentheses. She doesn't open up emotionally because she can't, and that's all there is to it. One of the reasons it freaks her out when a man is open with his feelings is because she knows she is unable to reciprocate those feelings due to the fact that she's been passed around more than a football in a run and shoot offense. Let's continue. I crave an emotionally mature connection, she says, but can't handle it in reality. I'd like to think that if I meet the right guy, that this won't feel so difficult. Hopefully, he'll make me feel at ease and we'll get along so well that I can open up. That being said, she said, the initial shock of trying to make that connection with someone is scary as hell. Not much to say here. This is just a regurgitation of number six, which is being afraid she can't open up emotionally because she knows she can't. Let's continue. I feel weird around traditionally successful guys, she continues. It's not necessary that a man be financially or materially successful. That's not the same thing as being a mature adult. On the other hand, most of the men I've met who are emotionally developed also have the rest of their act together, and it makes me feel like maybe I don't. First off, for her to say it's not necessary that a man be financially successful is disingenuous. Of course it matters. It matters to every woman, and that's okay. Wanting financial stability in a man isn't a crime any more than a man wanting physical attractiveness in a woman. But there are two main reasons she's posturing like this. Number one, she doesn't want to come off as a gold digger. And number two, she knows her value isn't high enough to require anything of a man, much less financial or material success. She doesn't want to look like the fat guy who says, if she's not a nine or 10, I'm not interested. So she takes the politically correct route by saying a man's financial status is immaterial. Secondly, she tries to tell us that just because a man is financially successful doesn't mean he's a mature adult and she's mostly wrong here. Any man who exercises financial shrewdness and discipline has to be a mature individual. This is exactly why she says most of the men who are emotionally developed also have the rest of their act together. The only exceptions to the rule are young professional athletes or men who are young and wealthy. She continues, I worry about feeling like I owe them. A truly evolved man, she says, would never make me feel this way. The problem is I get paranoid because I hate being at a disadvantage. I take care of myself and I pay my own bills, but I also can't exactly go crazy throwing money around. I try not to care, but I always feel like I'm lacking. So let's break out the womanese translator, shall we? What she's saying is that if a man can take care of her financially, or at the very least elevate her lifestyle because of the money and resources he brings to the relationship, then he shouldn't expect her to put out when he wants her to if he's truly evolved. What she means is that she does not want to feel obligated to uphold her end of the bargain in a relationship, which means giving her man her body when he wants it, which proves that, once again, women always want the benefits without the cost. All relationships are transactional, guys. The biggest part of the male end of the bargain is financial security, and the biggest part of the female end of the bargain is regular sex and exclusivity to her body. This is the unspoken agreement between men and women who commit to each other. A woman provides a man with her sexuality in exchange for access to his resources and vice versa. But according to Miss Horton, evolved men shouldn't expect anything in return for sharing his resources with a woman he's committed to who is also committed to him. He should just do it out of the kindness of his own heart because he's a great guy. So let's reverse the genders and the deeds again, shall we? So what if a man named Adam Horton wrote an article that said, quote, a truly evolved woman would never make me feel like I owe it to her to share my resources with her because she gives me regular sex and keeps her legs closed to other men. The problem is, Adam would continue, is that I get paranoid because I hate being at a disadvantage. I can have sex with random girls from time to time, but I can't exactly go out and get a new woman every night. Adam Horton would be public enemy number one. He'd have his name dragged through the mud, he'd be called a misogynist, a woman hater, and would have women demanding that he share his resources and money with women who committed to him and provides him with regular action in the bedroom. Now to be fair, Miss Horton is right. Women aren't obliged to do anything they don't want to do. If they don't want to give it the booty on the regular, they don't have to. If they don't feel like they should have to give their men their bodies whenever they want it, nobody is holding a gun to their head. But on the other side of that coin, men are not obliged to do anything either. We don't have to share our resources. We don't have to share our financial success. 
We don't have to provide for women if we don't want to. But here's the crux of the situation. Women in relationships still feel entitled to a man's resources even if they stop having sex with them. Wives the world over have stopped or throttled the sexual frequency they give to their husbands, but because they have children, he can't exactly withdraw his resources so they're essentially checkmated. But if their husbands cheat on them because of the lack of his wife's sexual availability, now it's a problem. A wife can close her legs and expect the husband to uphold his end of the bargain, but if a man cheats on her because she's withdrawn her sexual availability, she loses her mind and cries the typical rhetoric, men are dogs, men cheat, men can't be trusted. Here's something else. If a girl's boyfriend were to go broke or lose his job and her lifestyle gets downgraded because of his financial decrease, she leaves. But if a man decides to leave because his woman isn't giving him sex anymore, he's vilified as a philanderer and an adulterer. The fact of the matter is, is that women characterize their end of the bargain as a debt they owe to make sexual availability sound like it's forced or obligatory in order to give themselves permission to abandon their end of the bargain without consequences. They feel like they have a right to enjoy a man's resources even if they stop giving men their bodies, but then turn around and demonize men if they withdraw their money and resources or find another woman because his woman gains weight or stops putting out. So no. Women don't have to do anything they don't want to do. But guess what, ladies? Neither do we. She continues, I'm not interested in a standard lifestyle. Again, she says, there are exceptions to the rule, but most mature men that I meet are pretty stable in their lives. They have good jobs and they want a steady relationship and usually a home and a family and all the trappings. That just isn't me, but I don't want to end up with an irresponsible bum either. You know, a lot of women these days say they don't want to have kids or start a family. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. I've always said that just because you can doesn't mean you should, and that includes having children. Every man can be a father, but some just aren't cut out to be a dad. It's the same with women. Any female can become a mother, but not all of them are cut out to be moms. So Amy is just telling us that she doesn't want kids or a family. That's not alarming. Now, to her credit, at least she's being completely honest. She doesn't appear to regularly mislead men into believing she wants kids, then pull a bait and switch. Then she says she doesn't want to end up with an irresponsible bum, but what she fails to realize is that she's in no position to be picky. She's in her early 40s, not her early 20s. And what she just described in terms of the man she wants is a man who's well off financially, but doesn't want kids and lives a non-traditional lifestyle. Now, these men certainly exist, but they're not interested in long-term relationships with women like Miss Horton. They'll use women like her for one night stands from time to time in case they're in a slump or put them on their roster to maintain their abundance mindset but they don't take these women seriously for anything outside of just sex. She can want a high value man all she wants. It's not against the law, but I wanted to be the center fielder for the New York Yankees and that ain't happening either. I hate to admit that mature men test my confidence. She continues. I like to think that I've made great strides in the past few years and that I'm fairly self-confident now. It certainly feels that way until I come up against a guy who challenges me the way I see myself and also the way I see men. I can't take a position of superiority and I don't want to be inferior, but I don't feel equal. This is the inner conflict that feminists regularly grapple with. They're attracted to men who are superior to them, which is in their biological makeup, but they don't want to be inferior, which is the feminist programming. This is one of the main reasons most women today are completely confused. The feminist in any given woman wants the appearance of equality with a man who is superior to her. But when they get with a man who is superior, they naturally feel inferior, which both arouses and baffles her. What Miss Horton is asking for is an alpha male who exhibits beta traits. She wants a high value man who checks off all the boxes on paper, but wants him to dial back his power level to make her feel equal. And unfortunately for her, it doesn't work that way. A man in demand is never going to purposely make himself appear weaker or inferior just to appease his woman's insecurities about her value being lower than his. The reason women like Amy want to feel equal is because they want to maintain that abundance mindset. They like the feeling that comes with knowing she can upgrade anytime she chooses. And as we have all seen over the years, the abundance mindset causes women to regress. Knowing women can get sausage anytime they want to removes the incentive to maintain or increase their value. They gain weight, they close their legs, they can behave any way they want. Women like abundance because it's a lot easier to just exist without worrying about their men going anywhere. But when they get with a man who is superior to her, that abundance disappears and is replaced with scarcity. And even though women hate this feeling, it's good for both them and their men. Scarcity causes women to progress. Knowing her man can get sex anytime he wants gives her incentive to maintain and increase her value. 
She is motivated to stay fit, give her man bedroom action whenever he wants, and stay in pocket. Women don't like scarcity because it's a lot harder to keep themselves together to keep their men from stepping out on them. Abundance causes women to regress and scarcity motivates them to progress. Men are the polar opposite. Abundance is good for us while scarcity is bad for us. Today's women want the easy solution. They rarely do what's difficult but want the rewards that come with doing what's hard. They want the hot body without having to hit the gym and watch their diets. They want a man who's superior to them but don't want to feel inferior. Women always want it both ways, which segues right into number 12. I love the idea of a deep partnership, she says, but not the work that's involved. I'm not that different from the rest of my generation in some ways. I'm used to the ease of being single. And while ideally I'd like a deep, loving adult relationship, I also know that it takes time and energy that I'm not sure I'm willing to give up. Well, there you have it, guys. Amy just told us exactly what we already know about today's females. They want all the benefits of being in a committed relationship without having to give up the freedom that comes with being single. They want the payoff, but they don't want to have to pay. At some point, women do figure this out, but by the time they're willing to pay that price, it's too late. They don't have enough dating market value equity to cash in, so they end up with the men they rejected in their 20s, and it serves them right. I'm honestly terrified, she says, when someone actually chooses me. She continues. I'm always falling for men who are unavailable in some way or another. I hate that I'm like this and I know that I operate this way because it feels safer than engaging in risky vulnerability with someone who truly wants to be with me. Since when is sleeping with bad boys not risky behavior? Since when is having unprotected bedroom fun and emotionally investing in men who are bad for them safe? Amy's not terrified when someone actually chooses her. She's not afraid of risking vulnerability because she's done that her entire adult life with the wrong kinds of men. No, what she's afraid of is the men she chooses not choosing her. That's what she's really terrified of. Women like her engage in risky behavior all the time. So pretending she's afraid of risks, that's a ruse to make us believe that she isn't risky, which of course is a telltale sign of a banana gobbler. And she knows it. I've been in love so long that dating a grown man baffles me, she continues. I've not had many mature relationships in my life. I've been in love and I've had serious boyfriends but there was often an element of childishness in our interactions. We never really discussed our futures together or acted adult. Now I feel like I don't even know how to begin. This goes back to what I talked about at the beginning of this video. Most of her relationships have been with a-holes who treat her like garbage. Like I said, gentlemen, Amy's used to dysfunction. It's all she knows. This is why dating any other kind of man baffles her because she honestly has no idea how to conduct herself with a high caliber man. Luckily for her, she'll get to stay in her comfort zone because high-value men will not go anywhere near her, which will make her readily available to the dudes who are more than willing to pass her around. And finally, number 15. I don't like to feel that my partner is more emotionally mature than me. This is the real kicker, she continues. If I find a fully open and emotionally vulnerable man to date, I have to then confront and deal with my own issues with exposing my heart. I don't know that I'm quite ready to go there, but then again, there's never an ideal time to face your fears. Okay, so once again, the heading has nothing to do with what she wrote in this section, which seems to be a recurring theme among these bold authors. But let's talk about what she pointed out here. If she does find a fully opened and emotionally vulnerable man to date, she's going to lose attraction to him. Women may like the idea of dating a man who is emotionally vulnerable because it looks great in TV and movies, but women never stay with these guys. Why? Because vulnerability is weak and women do not like or respect weak men. Guys, I'm here to tell you, pouring your heart out to a woman and doing things like having cute little chats about your feelings over lattes and vegan shortbread cookies dehydrates her lady parts in a hurry. Women don't want this. They think they do, but they don't. I speak from firsthand experience, gentlemen. This is exactly why women don't stay with men who are emotionally vulnerable. And if they do stay with these men, they take advantage of their vulnerability because they despise weakness. So why on God's green earth would we as men purposely make ourselves weak and vulnerable to women when they've shown us time and again that they will take full advantage of and exploit our weaknesses and vulnerability? That's the equivalent of a boxer intentionally dropping his left hand against Deontay Wilder, who has arguably the greatest right hand in boxing history. What sense does that make? At the end of the day, women like Amy are scared to date mature men because number one, they know they're not turned on by them and don't want to end up with them. And number two, if they do run up on a guy who's worth a damn, they know he's not going to commit to her long term. And women simply do not handle rejection that well at all. Ask Robin Korth. All this fear is, is ego. 
Amy doesn't want her ego bruised when a man of value tells her, thanks, but no thanks, I'm not looking for anything serious right now, when she angles for a relationship with a man she actually respects and loves, but then finds out days later he's on a weekend getaway with the hot 21-year-old virgin who never met a recipe she didn't like, doesn't believe in putting a lock on her phone, and actually admits she likes doing things to make her man happy. She is even more baffled as to why she can't find this girl anywhere on social media. So guys, do you think women are actually starting to wise up about the way they date? Or do you think they'll just double down like Miss Horton has? And ladies, are you going to start looking at Amy Horton as a cautionary tale and heed the indirect warnings of her train wreck of a life? Or will you continue to hail her as a hero? Let me know in the comments. And for less than the price of a soy latte, you can watch my daily live stream Tuesday through Saturday afternoons. Right now, you're getting caffeine-free Diet Donovan. But on Patreon, you get the Loaded with Sugar and Caffeine Donovan that keeps you up all night if you finish the can. To get my raw, unfiltered, not-safe-for-YouTube content, go to patreon.com slash Donovan Sharp. The link is in the description.